Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 16 for the 5% series. And I need to run through the keys, the colour keys, because I've not yet integrated that into the main section. But I'll try and be quick. When we look at the players for Game Week 16, they'll be shown on a white background. I like to think of them as cards. But a few of them won't be white, they have a different colour and the meaning of the colours are as follow. If it's a yellow background, it means they're new to the system this week. Green mean they're a good buy, so any cards that are yellow or green, absolutely worth buying if you can get to them. Grey is bench fodder. These are usually going to be on your bench and they're the cheap cards and the cheap players rather. The point of those is to let you have more money for your main 11 players. Blue means they're sellable soon. Orange means they're sellable now. Red means sell now. And pretty much if a card's red, it's almost worth selling them even if it's for a hit to get in a green or yellow. So if you're wild carding, you want to buy white cards in yellow and green with a maximum of three grey ones and you want to be getting rid of any that are blue, orange or red. If you're just freshening up your team, you want to get rid of any that are red, orange and blue and bring in preferably green, but yellow's also all right and then white is okay. I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon. We've only had two games so far from game week 15. We have eight games left. So looking at the scores of the players for this game week's a little bit silly, but I'll show you what we've got so far anyway. So we've had the keeper, Raya. He managed to get one point, And that's all so far. Regarding the defenders, White and Saliba got one from the more expensive defenders. Slightly cheaper defenders, Gabriel's got one. Cheapest defender, Kubori's got zero. For the midfielders, Martinelli, Saka and Odegaard all got returned, so that's nice. None of the mid-price midfielders have played yet. And for the cheap midfielders, we introduced He Chan last week. And if you watch my 5% series, you'll see I was tempted to bring him in, but I didn't. And I even tweeted, because I tweet before the game just to show you what my team is, I did actually say I really, really want him, but meddling has cost me, so I didn't buy him. And then he goes and scores. But never mind. Uh, he's still all right for a couple of weeks, but he's cheap, He Chan. These are cheap midfielders. Regarding the forwards, Jesus, nice to see he's back in business. We introduced him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Adibayo got six, Morris got one. But these are cheap strikers mostly on the page now that are just for facilitating things. So on to game week 16. Let's talk about the players in the system and what I think of them all. Edison, I think, is expensive, but he's away to Luton. Then he's home to Palace. I wouldn't be buying him now. If you're wildcarding, I'd recommend you don't buy him, but you don't need to sell him if you've got him, unless you want to free up some funds. Pope, we now know that he's going to be out for four months or more. If you've got Pope, sell him. If that requires you taking a minus four, take a minus four, because he's only going to go down in price, and you want to have keepers. Uh, Ray is okay, but he had such a shocking game last night. Is he going to now get dropped or rotated with Ramsdale? We don't know. We need to see what happens there. Onana at home to Bournemouth. That's nice this week. Johnson. So Palace, Crystal Palace did have a run of nice fixtures, but they've now got Liverpool, Man City, Brighton, Chelsea. Almost certainly no clean sheets there. So he's he is sellable. We don't have to sell him, but if you want to sell him, you absolutely can. And there are a couple of cheaper keepers that are worth swapping for if you've got nothing else to do. Uh, Flecken, uh, away to Sheffield United. They're all right. Pickford, Ariola, These are kind of all much for muchness. Dubravka, he was new last week. He's up to four million now. He could play for the next four months for Newcastle. The expectations are Newcastle may try and get in another keeper, but that may not happen till January. So there's a reasonable chance we're going to get a few games out of Dubravka if you want to buy him. So if you've got Pope, it's all right to swap him for Dubravka. Or if you've got Turner, it's all right to swap him for Dubravka. Turner's might get one or two games, but at the moment he's not playing. So Turner's completely sellable. Regarding the expensive defenders, Trent is still a very good buy. Trippier is still a very good buy. White, it was nice to see him playing last night and he got an assist and he was actually quite good. Uh... But there are cheaper Arsenal defenders like Saliba. He's only marginally cheaper now. James, it's going to be interesting to see if James manages to start playing most of the match. If he is, then he's going to be a good buy. But I've not made him green yet because we need to see what's going to happen with him. But 
Chelsea are coming into some nice fixtures. Porro, he's worth having as a defender. I've made him green. So although Tottenham may never keep a clean sheet, he's in a very attacking player. He's like Trippier Light or something. So maybe not that good. But for 5.3 million, he's a good player and he could get you some attacking returns. Anderson, as I mentioned earlier, Palace have now had their good fixtures. He's absolutely sellable. Akanji, okay, Man City should keep some clean sheets. He tends to play more often than not. He's all right. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't bring Akanji in, but you don't have to sell him either. For the cheaper defenders, Simakas, I've got him. I'm probably going to offload him soon. I saw a bit of the game yesterday with him, or most of the game. He does make mistakes sometimes. Um, but he's certainly not a must-sell, and he is nice and cheap. He does enable you to spend money elsewhere. So he's fine to have, but Robertson should be back in a few weeks anyway, so he'll be off then. Gabriel for 4.9 is all right. Cash, Villa haven't... Apart from Game Week 18, where they're home to Sheffield United, they don't really have nice fixtures. At 4.9, he's absolutely sellable, because you want to make sure you've got at least three decent defenders you're happy to play. However, it's not worth taking a hit, I think, to get rid of him because in game week 18, they are home to Sheffield United. But then he's not getting necessarily 60 minutes a game. So from that point of view, he is fine to sell. So it depends on your team. You don't have to sell him. But if I had cash, I wouldn't be rolling. I'd certainly be moving him on. Udogi's right for 4.8, but not as attacking as Porro. Pinnock's all right, but Brentford and Man City aren't playing in game week 18. So you see he's got a little red dash for that. Colwell, he's nice and cheap. He's fit. He tends to play 90 minutes. He's all right. And I think he scored last game as well. Maguire's only 4.3, so onto cheap ones now. Lascelles, cheap at 4.2. Kabore, we've still got in the system at 4. If you have Kabore, it's just so you've got money to spend elsewhere. Regarding the midfielders, Salah, green, absolutely worth having at the moment. As is Son, a lot cheaper. And... We were wondering, with Madison out, is Son still going to be all right? And the answer is yes, Son is very good. So uh, we wondered without Kane, what's he going to be like? He's fine without Madison, he's fine. So Son is just a very solid pick to have. Saka, all three of these are good midfielders. Now it's going to be, I say difficult, it's going to be very difficult to have these three and then Trippier and Trent and Haaland. So you need to decide which ones you want to have. But all three of these are very good midfielders. Rashford, I did have him red for this week. And then I saw they're at home to Bournemouth. And I thought, fine, we're keeping one more week. So he's sellable soon. So if you're wildcarding, don't buy Rashford. And if you want to sell him this week, that's fine. There are better midfielders. But at home to Bournemouth, you might want to give him one more week. Then Fernandez, he's still a solid player. He, he's miles above the rest of the Man United players. Odegaard's good. It's nice to see he got a return last night. Martinelli's good. Bowen's fit, so that's good. They've got some nice fixtures. Now, the cheaper midfielders. Foden's all right, but he's missing in two weeks' time. And Bomo's all right, but he's missing in two weeks' time. Sterling's good, and Chelsea are coming up to some good fixtures. Diaby's not getting enough minutes to warrant holding on to him. Again, game week 18, home to Sheffield United. That is a nice fixture, but... You don't absolutely don't have to hold on to him just for the sake of that. If you've got enough people who are going to play in game week 18, it's fine to move him on. Matoma's good at home to Burnley. Matoma's fit now. Uh, I would be very happy having Matoma at the moment, but I'm not about to bring him in. Ward Prowse, he gets two points, two points, two points. Suddenly get a load of points, two points, two points. He's moderately cheap. There are better midfielders though. Gordon made him green, even though he's got a yellow triangle. Because hopefully he will play, we're expecting him to play. We understand he has been training, in which case at 6 million, he's a good player. And now the cheapest midfielders, He Chan, he's very good for the price. He's at home to Nottingham Forest next game week, which is at the weekend. So that's nice. And because he's nice and cheap, it's okay to have him. And some weeks when you may not want to play him, you don't need to feel bad about having him on your bench. Gibbs White, again, nice and cheap. But if I had to choose one of these at the moment, I would go He Chan. Neto, probably not back this week, but he may be back this week, but he's expected to be back very soon. So if you've held on to him this long, you might as well keep holding on to him. Palmer, only 5.3. Chelsea coming up to some very nice fixtures. He's a nice, cheap enabler. He's absolutely worth having. Nakamba, he's in here because he's an enabler. And he's, 
I would offload him, except he's only 4.4, and that is so cheap for a midfielder that plays sometimes. As for the forwards, Erling Haaland's got three very nice fixtures in the next four game weeks. Game week 18, he's missing. I've not made him green, but if you've got him, you should keep him. If you're wildcarding, you should bring him in. You don't have to, but you'd be a bit crazy not to. Watkins, good solid player. Most ex second most expensive forward we have in the system. So you may want to spend the funds elsewhere, but he ticks along nicely, often getting five, six, seven points. Jesus, we introduced him back in the system a couple of weeks ago. He's very nice, worth having. If I had to choose between Watkins and Jesus at the moment, I would go Jesus. Darwin, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> he gets in good positions. He may do really well in the next few game weeks. We need to watch. I'm hoping he doesn't get dropped because he's not scored for the last five Premiership games, I think it is, or the last five games. However, he's so close to scoring, I think Klopp's going to want him to score to get his confidence up. So I'm personally expecting him to still get a lot of game time. But I could be wrong. What do I know? Alvarez is alright, but he's missing in game week 18, so I wouldn't be buying Alvarez now. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't get Alvarez. But if you've got him, you don't need to sell him. Hoyland, I did have him as red this week, but then it was the Bournemouth issue again. I was like, ah, oh, okay, let's hold him for one more week because he's got Bournemouth. But probably after this week, he's going to be a sell. Solanke, 6.5. He's ticking along nicely. He's worth having. Uh, slightly cheaper forwards. Vista, he's all right, but he's missing in a couple of weeks. I wouldn't be buying him now, but you don't have to sell him. And Ketia, now that Jesus is back, if you've got him, sell him. If it costs you four points, I still think you should sell him. Giao Pedro, he scored three goals in the last two Premiership games and he's down as a grey because he's nice and cheap. At home to Burnley this week, so he's very tempting to start. I wouldn't be buying him unless you're buying him as a bit of an enabler so that he'll be on your bench most of the time because he rarely gets a lot of minutes, but he always plays something every game. Then Morris, another nice cheap player, only 5.2. Adibayo, 4.8. Archer, 4.6. But remember, you don't want more than three grey players in total and you don't have to have any. Now we're going to look at the bench order for the players. This is a suggestion. If you want to do something else, that's absolutely fine. The first goalkeeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, goes on your bench. I'm not showing Turner or Pope because if you have either of those, they're on your bench. If you have both of those, sell one of them, preferably Pope, and get in Dubravka or something like that. So Johnson for Crystal Palace, they're at home to Liverpool. Liverpool will almost certainly score. So if he's your keeper, he goes on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Areola, I'd expect him to let in a goal. He's on your bench. If you have neither of those, but then Pickford, he's on your bench. Ray is the next choice for the bench. Then it's Dubravka. All five of those I would expect to concede goals and not get a clean sheet. Flecken is our first chance of a clean sheet, our first reasonable chance away to Sheffield United. Then Onana at home to Bournemouth. Then Edison away to Luton. Regarding the outfield players, the first player you see that you've got, I'm suggesting goes to position three on your bench. The next one you see that you've got, I'm suggesting position two. The third one, position one. As with the, I mentioned earlier, this is a suggestion, but it is based on lots of things. And I know some of these orderings can be a bit surprising for some of you. And this is where I always say I need to find my glasses. Kabore. He's on your bench. Then Adibayor, Nakamba, Lascelles, because he's not really going to get attacking returned and they're away to Tottenham. Really not much chance of a clean sheet, I think. Anderson, Cash, because Cash is has a good chance of not getting long enough on the pitch to get a clean sheet, even if they did, and they probably won't. Neto, because I'm thinking Neto may come on for a few minutes, in which case he probably won't do much. But once Neto's fit, he'll obviously be normally a lot higher in the list. Morris, Archer, Maguire, just because United are very disappointing and we are getting into better players now. Hoyland, the thing with Hoyland and Maguire is, are oh, they going to get one or two points? There's a chance they get more, but probably not. Udogi, Diaby, Simakas for Liverpool, because he may not get the full, he may not be long enough on the pitch to get the clean sheet. And in any, any case, they may not even get a clean sheet. So I'm a bit nervous about him. Colwell, Vissa. Solanke, Akanji, James, Gibbs White, Ward Prowse, Pinnock, Darwin, Gabriel, Saliba, White. 
If you've got one Arsenal defender, I'm suggesting this is where they go. If you have two Arsenal defenders, then I'd put one of them further down the list. So I probably wouldn't play two Arsenal defenders. They're away to Aston Villa. So the order I've got them on the screen, I think, is the best order of them getting points, attacking returns. Um, so, for example, if I had White and Saliba, I'd have probably Saliba in the row below and play James instead of Saliba, for example. Porro, Rashford, very, very disappointing Rashford, but he could score something. At home to Bournemouth, Gordon, Martinelli, Sterling, Palmer, Jao Pedro, Hechan, Mitoma, Bowen. Now, the or this order is based on how many minutes I'm expecting them to get and who their opponent is and are they home and away and all this sort of thing. So if you want to change the order, that's fine. This is the order that I would suggest, though. If you really don't know, this is my recommendation. And if you've not seen the player, that's because you're playing them. Regarding captaincy, we have some good choices this week. Haaland, away to Luton. I would expect him to be the most captained. So if you have Haaland, he's the safest choice to captain this game week. Liverpool are away to Palace. Salah's got a reasonable chance of getting returns there. Sun at home to Newcastle. Tottenham's tactic is they just attack. If they're winning or losing or it's drawing, they just attack. And Sun is often involved. So Sun is a very good shout. But because of ownership levels, I'd say Haaland's probably the safest. But all three of those, I'd say, are good captaincy choices. Other players, though, if you don't fancy one of those. Fernandez. I know United are rubbish, but he is a lot better than the other 10 players put together. He is very good. And they're at home to Bournemouth. He's a reasonable chance. He has a reasonable chance of getting a return. Embremo, Brentford are away to Sheffield United, so that could be a good game. And then Mitama at home to Burnley, reasonable chance of results. So if you can choose one of the top three, I absolutely would. But if you want to choose one of the bottom three, that's okay. That's a reasonable shout. It's quite a big differential, though. If you can choose a captain and a vice captain out of these six because you've got them, that would be my recommendation. But if you haven't got two of these and you want to just pick one of the players that we saw earlier that was green, that would be absolutely fine as well. Regarding the background picture, so we're coming up to Christmas and you might be involved in a pub quiz or a family quiz. And so a couple of bits of trivia here. Obviously, the fastest animal, land animal, you probably know is the cheetah, about 70 miles an hour. And the football in a professional game, when it gets kicked fast, is at about 70 miles an hour. So football, cheetah, same speed. The fastest a football's been measured, being kicked apparently, I guess for Guinness World Records, was 131 miles an hour. And the fastest animal that's ever been clocked is the peregrine falcon at nearly twice that speed. I think it's about 240 miles an hour, it might be 241 miles an hour. It was clocked in a dive. So the fastest animal, if you want to know a bit of trivia, is the peregrine falcon for 241 miles an hour. So there we have it, my recommendations for game week 16. We have only had two games, so with eight games left to go, there's a chance, reasonable chance, some of the players in the system are going to pick up injuries. So when you come to do your team, if you see there's a the little triangle there, that should influence what you do. If it's a yellow triangle, which is 25% chance of not playing, 75% chance of playing, then you can probably ignore it and just follow the instructions. But if it's orange or red, then you need to think, right, I'm not bringing that player in, that player's going on my bench, and whatever else. And I wouldn't captain, I probably wouldn't captain an orange or red player either. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that makes sense. And I'll read the comments and try and respond to any questions you have regarding your teams. Thanks. Bye.